What is going on everyone? Back with another video. And today I have a watch review for you. Uh, I know I don't do these too often, but I am getting away from knives a little bit and getting back into my timepieces. So they have a Citizen a Primo Stingray 620. A very nice sporty watch for a very nice price. It does feature Eco Drive. Um, and so that way you don't have to change your batteries. So uh, let's hop in here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice about the watch is that it is a very sporty look. Again, it has the black with the red motif, which is always a good color combination uh, for a lot of things. Uh, just for example, I have my wallet here. This is a handmade wallet. I did this myself. And of course, it's a black. I decided to go with black with the red threading. You know, it looks very, very nice and, and, uh, and sporty. Uh, so they, had a, they did one with a very nice coloration. Uh, they also have, I believe in this version, the Primus Singer, like a kind of a gold or dark brown uh, with a, uh, I just want to say it's like a kind of a, I don't know, it's like, it's like a brown on brown, essentially like golden brown. So a very interesting color. I didn't like it, but I do like this really sporty model. So taking a look around the case here, uh, we got a size of uh, 44 millimeters uh, for the case size. And we got about 14 millimeters for the thickness. We have about 50 millimeters for lug to lug. And we finally got 22 millimeters uh, for the lug width. So a pretty, uh, pretty uh, average size watch in my opinion for the specs. So in terms of size, just want to show you, this is uh, again the Primo Stingray is a 44 millimeter case versus a uh, 40 millimeter case size. Just tell a bit of a difference there. Uh, not too bad. Um, it does it does have a bit of a wrist present, but because the watch is a lot lighter than, uh, well, for say a lot of mechanical watches, this is a quartz movement, of course, powered by EcoDrive. Uh, it, is, it doesn't wear very heavy on your wrist, as I found out. Here it is next to a 47 millimeter case size. Uh, you could tell, uh, it, you know, 47 is getting a little too large for me personally, but uh, I do wear this Invicta uh, on occasion if I want to go a little bit dressier. Uh, so starting with the dial here, uh, you got your main dial, which is basically black and red motif going on. And you got three sub dials. You got your uh, AM or PM marker right here. Uh, also, you have your seconds uh, sub dial at the six o'clock position. You can see it ticking away, typical quartz movement. And then on the nine o'clock side, you see that you have a uh, minutes elapsed for the chronograph. So it's kind of a, a semi busy dial for, uh, you know, if those guys like a, a clean dial. This is not really be the watch for you. But again, this is kind of a more sportier watch. You got the red accents on the pushers right here. Uh, you have a tachymeter on the inside uh, bezel here and also a unidirectional rotating bezel. Uh, it is a 60 click bezel, I believe. So it is accurate. It does fall right on the seconds, but you don't have that a um, little bit more accurate 120 click bezel that a lot of my other watches do feature. Uh, but I will say there's no play on this bezel whatsoever. I mean, I, I can't get this to move because you know, some watches, uh, when I go click like this, you can actually move it back a little bit. And it just kind of wiggles. So this, there's no wiggle on this bezel, which is very nice. This pusher up uh, on the two o'clock operates the uh, you know start of the chronograph and uh, the pusher at the four resets it. So let's go and just start that up really quick so you see how it goes. Um, so again, that's their seconds and this is your minutes elapse. So you see the stopwatch uh, again. You got your at your nine o'clock. You got the minutes uh, to uh, record recording and then the, this needle is uh, recording the um, the seconds. So if I if I go ahead and just stop the stopwatch here and I reset it, the hands do a full sweep. Uh, the, the minutes snap back, but the seconds hand has to do a full sweep. Uh, kind of annoying because I'm used to kind of a lot of mechanical watches with chronographs that the, the seconds hand just snaps back into the 12 position. So you don't really have to wait for the full sweep of the seconds hand. Anyways, there's a day. Uh, marker down here quite small but it is white with black lettering uh, so it, it does pop so it's not like a black background with white lettering which doesn't really pop as well see the pushers are very nice sized and uh, love that little streak of red in them uh, it really makes those colors pop you know otherwise be a very very dark looking watch and of course you know I'm not really into like murdered out watches where everything's just you know blacked out and uh, um, tactical style watches. I do like a bit of color, you know, like the uh, pull and push crown. And the cool thing I want to show you guys is that it is hackable. So if you watch the seconds uh, sub dial here, if I pulled all the way out, you notice how the seconds stop. So you can actually just uh, set the time to this watch very accurately. I have a uh, atomic uh, uh, 
watch, radio controlled watch, uh, Casio, that I actually set this straight to the seconds and it, it just it's just very nice to have this. So just click that back and you see the seconds start running again. Start the chronograph again. Very beautiful again, black and red. Got the double stitching, whereas the normal uh, Primo uh, watch only has a single stitching. Uh, I'm not really too crazy about these three gigantic holes in here, but of course they had to do something different for the Primo Stingray versus the Primo, I assume. Now, watch fit. Uh, I got relatively thin, slender wrists, and while I say the very last hole on here is pretty much perfect for my own taste. Um, for those who want a more tighter fitting, you're going to want a hole right after the last one. Uh, I have six and three quarter wrist size, which is pretty skinny, and I know the average is about seven to seven and a half. Uh, if you have seven, seven and a half, this will fit you just fine, no worries on there. Uh, but six and three quarters, you're going to want another hole there. Cool. Double retention straps, like normal. We got a sign. Oops. We got a sign buckle with Citizen as coated black to match the rest of the motif going on with this watch. Here's a look at the case back. Uh, stainless steel. You got the uh, markings of all the Citizen uh, stampings on there. Ten bar water resistance. Japanese movement. The screw down case back. Pretty blah, you know, not much going on back here. There's luminous hands and markers here, uh, and it is applied. I'll be showing you the loom later on, but I want to show you the uh, really nice depth that this provides here. It's just very nice looking from an angle, and you can see there's not much uh, distortion on the glass here. Uh, this is a mineral glass. Of course, for this price range, you normally do not get sapphire. Mineral is fine, though. It's a little bit less shatter resistant. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> a little bit more shatter resistant. Uh, but it does scratch a little easier, though. But, you know, there's always pros and cons to everything in the world. But you can see really, really nice depth to this dial here. Really love it. And the sub dials are recessed on the 3 and the uh, 9 o'clock positions. Okay, just to show you what a fully charged up... Uh, you know, the luminous hands and the markers. I charged this up with my uh, flashlight just to show you what it looks like. And it is quite bright. It's not bad at all. Um, in my experience, this has pretty much rivaled most of my Seikos that I've owned. Uh, while some of the Seikos have way more legible markers, uh, this is not too bad. As you can tell here, it actually lights up the watch face just a tiny bit as well. So very legible at nighttime. Uh, I do find that it fades a little bit faster than my normal uh my normal uh well not normal but my other uh, watches like my seikos and stuff uh but not bad at all for this price range now if i had one gripe about this watch uh actually i have two gripes about this watch uh, for me personally and uh it's uh basically the watch strap is not really formulated to fit any wrist size smaller than, than say seven uh, inch wrists uh, again on my wrist is quite loose uh, well not quite loose but it is loose where it just flops around when you uh, have your arms hanging down or you know you go to spin your wrist look at your watch and the watch rotates a little bit so that was my first gripe but again that's just genetics for me on my part the second gripe I have is actually uh, mechanical it's more that this watch while it is accurate I do find that it runs fast so if you don't adjust the time every day or every other day, uh, you'll find this watch running about the third day. It's going to run about uh, three to four minutes faster. So that is the other gripe I have too. Um, you, I would, I thought it was thought that quartz movements are pretty much very, very accurate, or pretty much more accurate than most mechanical movements. But it kind of, I guess you know, it all depends on what type of mechanical movement you have in your watch, of course. Um, but I was very surprised to find that out that, uh, again, this watch does run fast uh, on a daily basis. So we'll go ahead and end this video with uh, some wrist shots um, to show you what it looks like on my wrist. Again, I have six and three quarter wrists, so pretty, pretty thin. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. I find that anywhere between 42 and 44 is pretty much my standard size of case, case size for my watches that I like. Uh, my Invicta Grand Diver uh, is getting way too big at 47. Uh, but so usually I stay with this 44. It looks very nice. Uh, again, if I if I would have coordinated my outfit a little better, it probably looked a little better. But it, you know, I want you guys to actually see the watch. 
So uh, anyways, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me. I don't really do too many watch uh, reviews and, uh, it, you know, I'm just kind of not, I'm not really uh, great at the format yet. So hopefully as I do more reviews, I'll get a little better. So any questions or comments, please leave it below uh, or you can send me a personal message. Aside from that, everybody take care, have a nice day and I'll catch you guys on the next one.